great pleasure to present you His Excellency Professor Ushko Ofendich, who will give us uh, a lecture on cultural and tradition, a case study of bilateral relations, cultural and cooperation between Serbia and Portugal. Welcome, Your Excellency, and thank you for accepting this participation in this conference. Uh, firstly, I will try to present you, Excellency, Mr. Lopendus, and Mr. Sanchez. Dusko Lopendus is Professor of International and European Law, Vice President of the European Union of Serbia, former diplomat, researcher, lecturer, and publicist. Mr. Lopendus received his master's degree in Paris and Brussels, BUD University and his doctorate at the University of Paris, Pantheon Sorbonne, in the field of European law. Former ambassador of the Republic of Serbia, Portugal, and Cape Verde, and the head of mission of Serbia to the European Union in Brussels. Professor Lopendich has collaborated with a number of research institutions and NGOs also, and published over 100 articles and 30 books on the topics such as EU studies, regional cooperation, and international relations. Professor Lomfatic writes essays and books in the field of history and also history textbooks, and he received the Contribution of the Year to Europe Award. Also today, my Great pleasure is to announce that today's respondent is a distinguished professor, Milena Grigitsevich and also feel sensitive about Professor Shashic. Professor Milena Grigitsevich is a professor emerita, a former president of the University of Art, Belgrade, founder of UNESCO Chair in Intercultural Art Management and Mediation, professor of cultural policy management. Cultural Studies, Media Studies, and uh, he obtained diplomas of BAA Paris in 1977, MA at University of Art Belgrade in uh, 1981, and PhD in Literature and Communication at the University of Belgrade in 1990. Uh, Professor Radici Vishesic owns the French order Commander de la Ordre de la Pal Académique in 2002, and also a Professor Milena Shkvitsky Shashic obtained a fellowship laureate in 2019 uh, at University of Art uh, and also in 2004. Professor Dimitri Shashic uh, was guest lecturer, lecturer at numerous world universities, published. 20 books and more than 200 essays. Uh, I will mention some of them. Well, the novel politics of the world, art management in modern times, uh, intercultural mediation in Balkans with Dragovic, art and culture and business, uh, culture management and nation marketing with Stoikovic. Uh, also, Professor Dimitri Shashic is expert for the UNESCO unique. European Cultural Foundation, Council of Europe. She realized more than 50 projects in cultural policy and management in what countries in Europe are countries silent, etc. cetera. Dear Professor Milena, welcome to this presentation. Now, uh, I think that we are ready to learn more about uh, cultural diplomacy, more about cultural diplomacy through of Portugal and Serbia case study. Uh, that's why, um, Your Excellency, for <coughs> Thank you very much. I'm uh, really honored to be invited at this conference, very interesting, important conference. And uh, I would like to share with you some of my experience in, uh, as, uh, from the point of view of a practitioner of diplomacy. Uh, it's uh, cultural diplomacy is uh, a kind of uh, very important uh, topic uh, in, uh, in diplomacy in general. I mean, this is uh, 
sometimes overlooked, but uh, uh, it plays, in fact, a very important role in promotion of national interests, especially in the field of so-called soft power of, uh, of states. Let's take, so for example, only a recent example, which is uh, one of the popular culture about this uh, Euro Eurovision uh, music contest, and we can immediately reflect on links between geopolitics on one side and popular culture on the other, as well as regional cooperation, bilateral relations, and also uh, influence of different cultural patterns on, for example, ways how the jury is voting on these uh, different uh, songs or different countries, etc. Uh, the most uh, general definition of cultural diplomacy uh, would be the following one. Cultural diplomacy is a type of public diplomacy and soft power that includes the exchange of ideas, information, art, language, and other aspects of culture among nations and their peoples in order to foster mutual, mutual understanding. To quote an American diplomat, there are two aspects of cultural diplomacy. The private one, uh, let's call it informal developments in inter international cultural cooperation that develop spontaneously as culture is like a water. It passes any kind of barriers, either physical, geographic, or social type of barriers. But on the other side, there is an inter intentional state oriented activity that is connected with the cultural uh, uh, relations, international relations. And we see that is uh, connected and linked to the divulgation of national culture and support of international cultural contacts. And I quote again, cultural relations grow naturally and organically without government intervention. The transaction of, of trade and tourism student flows, communications, book circulation, migration, media access, intermarriage, millions of daily cross-cultural encounters. If that is correct, cultural diplomacy can only be said to take place when formal diplomats serving national governments try to shape and channel these natural flows to advance national interest. That's a little bit what I'm going to speak in the, in the rest of my expose uh, how uh, Serbia as a country, how I see the, the Serbian uh, institutions role uh, in uh, promoting and, and coordinating this natural context that exists uh, uh, through thousands and millions of, of personal contacts, etc. Uh, if, in fact, uh, there is a direct contact, uh, context or, or uh, connection between a state image on one side, country image, and its uh, results, for example, in cultural diplomacy. So that's, again, I can say that uh, uh, this role of cultural diplomacy is extremely important. Just uh, let me make a little parenthesis here and to, to say that uh, uh, we should understand uh, now this diplo world diplomacy as something that not comprise only political relations between international actors. It's very diversified actually activity. Uh, we, we have been living uh, at least we believed uh, until recently in a kind of globalized world, uh, as it is said, the world is a village. And uh, every uh, uh, everybody who is involved in international contacts relations you know, is in a kind of diplomatic activity. But obviously, uh, what I would like to say, the, the diplomacy is not only connected with, with the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and its activities as, as it was uh, maybe in the uh, 18th, 19th centuries, the case. Uh, we, we are now, we have uh, multiple 
diplomatic uh, contacts, relations through all kinds of uh, uh, social uh, activities, and they are expressed through different kinds of institutions, uh, either national institutions, state institutions, or uh, even social actors, uh, associations, etc. So there is a kind of, we can speak about, you know, well, I don't know, transport, the, the diplomacy, the transport ministry, the agriculture ministry, etc., or diplomacy of museums. Uh, the museum network is extremely important. And uh, I'm sure you, you know, as I know, you are very much involved in, uh, in all these type of uh, diplomatic so-called activities, including scientific uh, cooperation, which is also extremely important. However, again, uh, what is uh, actually uh, important to, to stress and to, to analyze maybe <laughs> is that how much the state as such uh, is uh, successful in coordinating or streaming this different type of uh, uh, very uh, uh, diversified international relations into kind of uh, uh, message or effect that would promote uh, what we call national interest. And this is not always, always obvious that uh, some states are more or less successful in this, in this regard. I remember, and this is uh, for the sake of an anecdote, a little bit uh, when I was ambassador in Brussels. Uh, so later, than, therefore, it was later than Portugal. I met with at uh, uh, that time a uh, uh, minister of culture, and I spoke to him uh, 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 how important it would be for Brussels uh, that Serbia, as a candidate country for accession, uh, uh, promotes a kind of uh, specific, very uh, focused uh, uh, cultural image and diplomacy uh, in a larger sense in this bubble for this called the Brussels institutions. So to, to all these people, there are thousands and thousands of people, uh, people coming from all uh, around Europe, European capitals every day, uh, or European parliament, uh, different lobbies, national representations, etc. Very uh, large, important. Uh, what we call, can call a type of uh, European elites that are connected with European Union. And the uh, answer uh, was not very encouraging to me because uh, at the time, uh, well, there was no interest from our side, from the Ministry of Culture side, to have this type of specific, uh, focused, uh, uh, coordinated. Uh, uh, cultural diplomacy in Brussels, but nevertheless, we managed to organize some uh, uh, exhibitions uh, by our own means in, uh, by, through the Serbian mission in Brussels. And uh, 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 there, was, there was obviously much more important uh, activities, institutionalized activities with the European Union, such as, you know, the uh, membership to the, this program, Creative Europe, or, or some other different types of uh, uh, promotion of uh, image of uh, our country through the, the for example, this uh, today in Orissa, this cultural uh, capital of Europe, uh, <coughs> or there are some uh, even private uh, initiatives that are connected with the state support as. Uh, uh, naive uh, art uh, from Kovacica that is promoted, etc. So uh, that's uh, that is that was my my introduction a little bit about uh, how I see the, the, the cultural the activities of cultural diplomacy and uh, uh, my concrete example of experience in uh, in Brussels, but now I'm going to speak uh, more about my subject, uh, about subject uh, Portugal relations with Serbia and uh, what we could do as a, uh, let's say, it's very small diplomatic mission in uh, 
in Lisbon uh, uh, in my time, uh, it was between uh, 2007 and 11. It was uh, uh, we were well, two diplomats plus some uh, uh, embassy staff, so very very small uh, diplomatic mission, which is uh, kind of normal for for. Uh, in, in, in those days, so by the way, I was a few days ago in the uh, Serbian embassy in, uh, in Paris, and uh, uh, I realized they have uh, two or three diplomats all together. That, that is uh, totally uh, impossible, I would say, to, to work really seriously uh, uh, only with such country. But even with the with two people in Portugal, it was difficult, but we managed to do something. Uh, anyhow, relations between uh, Serbia and Portugal are uh, exactly one of these examples the situation where bilateral relations between two uh, uh, distant countries, uh, geographically distant countries, with uh, uh, relatively limited political context and uh, small economic ties in general can be improved through cultural diplomacy or uh, also projects of scientific cooperation that are sometimes uh, connected. Portugal and like Serbia uh, is a good example because it's a relatively small country with uh, uh, limited resources, uh, I would say, uh, which are uh, uh, however, still much larger in comparison to uh, to the, the the amount of uh, resources that our country is investing in this uh, in this uh, field of cultural diplomacy. Uh, it has uh, about Portugal has about ten million inhabitants. It produces a GDP of two hundred fifty billion dollars which is uh, more or less four times uh, Serbia's G GDP. Uh, so uh, this is uh, much, uh, it is much stronger, but in uh, comparison to other EU countries, it's, uh, it has a rather uh, small, small GDP. <clears throat> so we are uh, these are countries uh, with the some similarities that are, uh, we are located two countries on different peninsulas and we are rather far from a main European uh, economic uh, and uh, population and uh, cultural centers that are more or less uh, around the triangle between, uh, let's say, Paris, Berlin, uh, Milano, uh, etc. Uh, uh, but on the on the other side, from the other side, we can say that we have a kind of very interesting uh, uh, common points, uh, historic common points. For example, we can in Portugal has a very long history of uh, interrelations with uh, Islam culture, uh, not from the same period as uh, Serbia, but. Uh, uh, Arabs lived uh, longer in Lisbon, uh, around uh, four centuries, than Ottomans in uh, Belgrade, for example, between eight and uh, twelve uh, centuries. Uh, also, both countries have a very significant diaspora. Uh, uh, emigration uh, uh, is, is uh, I would say, a traditional in Portugal, especially when it was. Uh, less developed than, than today, but even today there is a very strong uh, emigration trend uh, in Portugal. However, not so strong and not so, I would say, uh, uh, detrimental for social uh, uh, structures as today in uh, in the Balkans in general. In Serbia, we have kind of really uh, huge problem with uh, with the emigration of young and educated. People that is that is driving away uh, social strength and forces and the potentials. Anyway, uh, we can also say that from the, again from the other side of uh, in this small comparison between two countries, 
Portugal is very different from uh, from Serbia because it has, for example, it is uh, in same it has same size, more or less same borders since 12th century. So uh, if we, we, we look to to the map of Europe in 12th, 13th, 14th century, there is always Portugal. We you know that we know that Serbia has changed so many times. So uh, the, this is something tradition. Uh, is looked at in a very different ways in Portugal and in, in Serbia. And obviously, Portugal was a maritime uh, empire or superpower during the uh, 15th, 16th century with the, the, the Kubernetes uh, explorers that, uh, as you know, discovered the roads around uh, Africa to India with Vasco de Gama and here Colombo. Was uh, started his career, uh, maritime career in port on Portuguese ships before he, he moved to to Spaniards as better best better uh, providers. I'm saying uh, in Portugal also. Well, we we like to uh, think or to, to speak about uh, our small empire. I would say from Middle Age, uh, Portugal had a real huge empires uh, during history with the uh, first in Asia, then uh, third, second in South America and uh, third in, uh, in Africa. So uh, <clears throat> this is interesting also from the <clears throat> cultural point of view and, and the heritage because uh, almost on every continent of uh, in the world, there is a monument that is Portuguese and it is under protection of UNESCO. Both in Asia and in South America, <laughs> Americas, and in, uh, in Africa. And there is another point that can be very much uh, compared to different to different uh, points. This is language, uh, Portuguese language that is uh, uh, spoken as official language by I think. Uh, Eight countries in the world, and there is a special organization of Rosoponia that, to which we are, uh, as Serbia, we are uh, observers to this organization. While, uh, well, this is a, a, we can discuss about if language is a point, common point of uh, connection or language as a second point of uh, dispute, as this case of uh, Serbian or Croatian. That, uh, that uh, more of the time is uh, the, the use not uh, as a, a inofficial or inofficial uh, uh, discourse uh, as a point of, of uh, divergence or, or uh, dispute and not so much uh, of uh, cooperation. Our two countries had uh, uh, more or less uh, very good relations we don't have a, that's the, the, the point that is important for somebody who is going to work as a diplomat in the mission. Uh, well, we don't have to worry very much about problems. You know, with name, if you go to, to any neighboring country, there are always some, some important issues or worries. In Portugal, it is far, and we don't have <coughs> any kind of of dispute, so there is a, a good, uh, a positive ground for exploring uh, relations. Uh, trade has been increasing uh, uh, mostly. We, we reached uh, <coughs> recently well, almost hundred million dollars, uh, and uh, we have also uh, uh, what is important from our point of view is our our. Our immigrants diaspora in Portugal that is not so large, but it's uh, I would say of uh, uh, it's uh, educated people, mostly the people who left uh, Serbia in the 90s or uh, later, and uh, there are a lot of uh, people from from cultural side. For example, they are they are artists, uh, musicians. Uh, by the way, in Portugal they did they didn't have tradition of uh, high school musical school, so. They, did, they don't have their uh, local national uh, classical musicians so much, and they import almost their, their orchestra are 90% uh, uh, 
uh, imported from other countries. So there are some of pianists who are, who are from Serbia, or we had even <coughs> Mr. Dea Savic, uh, uh, director of, of opera, who was a guest uh, for several years in the, in the, uh, in Algarve to, to some uh, orchestra. Official relations uh, between Serbia and Portugal started uh, uh, in the late 90s after the recognition of independence of Serbia, but basically uh, uh, in the, it's only uh, the beginning of the 20th century that the uh, Kingdom of Serbia opened the uh, so-called uh, honorary consulates in uh, Lisbon and Porto because of uh, commercial interest, basically. Uh, we did uh, open uh, missions uh, until the First World War. In 1917, uh, during war, as we, we were allies, uh, there, was, there was the first uh, uh, diplomatic uh, missions established between two countries, but it did not last so much in, uh, between two world wars. It, uh, there, there were no... Uh, uh, there were diplomatic relations, but they were uh, uh, made through different uh, missions uh, and was uh, to the at the time, uh, either through Paris or through Madrid. Uh, in the wake of Second World War, uh, we had uh, Representative Jovan Dulcic, who was uh, envoy to Madrid and who was also a representative of uh, Kingdom of Yugoslavia to, to Lisbon. And after the start of the war, he, he moved uh, from Madrid to Spain, recognized the uh, uh, independent state, so called independent state of Croatia. And uh, we, our government at that time, uh, uh, moved the, the mission from Madrid to Lisbon. Lisbon was uh, 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 during the Second World War, was a mission in Lisbon was one of the main the major uh, missions for our uh, the government in exile because of this uh, specific uh, position of Lisbon. Portugal was neutral countries, all kind of information, all kind of uh, diplomats, spies, uh, delegations were present in Lisbon, and uh, we had a very important mission in. Uh, uh, at that time, but after the Second World War, again, because of the ideological difference between uh, uh, Yugoslavia, communist Yugoslavia, and uh, uh, Portugal, which was the dictatorship of Salazar, uh, the relations were, were uh, 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 broken, and uh, we did not have a diplomatic. Uh, a representation in uh, Lisbon until the revolution, April Revolution in Portugal in 1974. So after after that time, the relations were more or less uh, in a, in a increasing, uh, except the period again of 90s when uh, Serbia Serbia Montenegro was. Or Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was under sanctions. So this is the general context of, of, our, of our history, historic uh, relations, uh, diplomatic, economic, etc. relations uh, with which uh, I had to deal somehow uh, uh, with the, with the, with the any type of activity. Uh, I mentioned it a bit. A beginning that there is uh, on our side there is this what we can call private private cultural uh, flows that exist uh, between countries. Uh, uh, either you do you do do something or not uh, about it. Because there are some some books that may be popular. Some some uh, writers. Uh, Saramago today in Serbia is rather. Uh, 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 largely uh, read and known, uh, but uh, I was surprised for, uh, when I arrived, for example, after maybe one, two months, there was a concept of Eric uh, uh, Kusturica and No Smoking Orchestra 
and uh, I uh, was totally surprised how, how big uh, uh, influence they had. Actually, they had it was a, a concert for three, four thousand people in the in center of Lisbon, and they they all uh, sang uh, songs of you know, uh, smoking or uh, no smoking orchestra. And they knew them better than I, I did. And actually, those popular orchestra uh, had never such a uh, influence, popularity inside the country that they had in some uh, external uh, countries, uh, even in South America, as you know. On the other side, uh, if we speak about music, uh, father is always has been some uh, uh, kind of popularity in, uh, in Serbia. But I, I must uh, emphasize, uh, as far as music is concerned, that this is a good example of, of, of uh, cultural promotion because Fado is not something that uh, developed uh, outside of Portugal only through this private means, uh, uh, but it was very much established, supported by uh, Portuguese state for, for decades, not uh, years, but decades. Generation of uh, Bado musicians had uh, different uh, uh, stipends uh, and the other type of uh, support. Uh, this music was uh, very discreetly, but uh, very steadily supported in Portugal. Uh, so, uh, in, in general, if I can uh, analyze the position of a diplomat or an ambassador outside country, you are more or less, you are uh, uh, in, in, you're in supported by, by, by cap your capital, by your institutions, but de facto, mostly you are on your own. You uh, have to rely on your own uh, uh, ideas, uh, Initiatives uh, you have to look to the to the context uh, to see whether you can find out the points of cultural context and try to promote something. For example, even for such things that uh, that uh, for every diplomatic missions are important in their uh, normal daily life that are. Uh, National days in celebration of National Day. Uh, time sometimes you get some money to organize a, a cocktail. Sometimes you receive a message, no money for this year. Uh, that uh, you are on your own, but uh, try to. And they had try to do something, <laughs> not so that you should not do. And uh, sometimes it's not so so. Difficult because there are companies or sponsors that you can get in some countries, but uh, in a country like Portugal, it's not possible. You can, you can. What I did mostly in two, three years is to invite some, some of my, uh, some musician, either a violinist or a piano player, who could uh, make the concert uh, with his own. And he would uh, finance because everybody is interested to come to Lisbon and to make a set. So people are ready to come, and I provide the accommodation because we have a huge uh, house. Uh, and uh, that's 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 this combination of uh, as I would uh, a little bit uh, joke. I would say public-private initiative. Actually, that that we are. Uh, Providing, uh, but uh, okay, we can we can some uh, some uh, also good examples of this of this uh, concrete uh, uh, activities. For example, Serbian Serbian promotion of Serbian culture in uh, in uh, Lisbon. First example that I can give is uh, Serbian culture week in Porto. Uh, the initiative came about by. Uh, uh, by chance, actually, as yes. uh, it happens, uh, I studied a little bit of diplomatic history. I discovered by chance that we opened the uh, Serbia opened the first uh, honorary consulate uh, exactly 100 years uh, ago at the time. Uh, in Porto, it was uh, nine, uh, 
1907 or eight, I don't remember exactly. So I wrote a letter to uh, to mayor of Porto, and I was really surprised that uh, immediately we received a very polite answer. Mayor of Porto even sent one uh, representative to Lisbon. Uh, who is dealing? Who was dealing with culture, and uh, they proposed to us uh, immediately to to have, uh, for example, one week of uh, of Serbian culture promotion of Serbian culture in Porto, and then uh, hard hard part tells after that that uh, we were obviously offered uh, uh, nice palaces, uh, big space, but uh, we had to fill so somehow. Uh, with, with the view to some music or some okay. discuss uh, yeah, agenda for this. Uh, and then uh, again, uh, comes this uh, you are on your own. The, there is nothing uh, possible to get from, from capital. Uh, we, uh, what we got uh, at that time is uh, something like a thousand euros for organizing. From my ministry to organize hotel reception in Porto, and uh, which was nice, but it's not enough to <coughs> to speak about one week of Serbian culture. So uh, uh, we we mostly we try to to use this uh, local local uh, uh, with some, some of journalists who were involved, Portuguese journalists who knew something about uh, our situation in the Balkans or some. Uh, there was a lady who was a, a translator of uh, Andrich, I think, and we organized discussion about Andrich. This is also one point of similarity. We have one Nobel Prize in literature, they have also only one new Nobel Prize, so we can compare our, our uh, 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 let's say, <laughs> uh, literary uh, capacities. And uh, there was there was some uh, some uh, activities on radio, local radio in Porto, etc. There are there are students also from Serbia in Porto, and uh, we also organized something with that. So uh, so this is uh, this is kind of ad hoc uh, uh, initiative that results in some kind of uh, uh, real activity, but act ad hoc activity. Another example that I uh, remember it was a uh, uh, week of uh, Serbian movies in uh, Lisbon Cinematheque. Uh, it is a, a much more complicated matter to uh, to organize. Uh, it takes more or less for every uh, diplomat who involves with this uh, his own mandate. Uh, if you start this year. Uh, you can be lucky second or third year. Uh, there is a, a kind of presentation because it's uh, it's uh, first uh, they have agenda programs that are already uh, uh, reaching uh, next year uh, mostly, and also our, uh, there is support from our, our film center of Serbia, but but uh, this is also if they have to send those. If, 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 I don't know today, but at that time it was necessary to 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 bring those. Big, yeah, big, and the translation that is also one one problem because not every movie first it's not translated at all in Portuguese, but they don't care if it is English. They in cinema tech they accept uh, English translation, and sometimes they there is a problem with translation, etc. So it takes time, basically. Uh, third uh, example that I can uh, mention uh, that uh, connects with what we can call, <coughs> if it is a right expression, in the English culture of remembrance. Uh, uh, well, the, the idea was to uh, connect uh, Lisbon with uh, with uh, kind of something with uh, with uh, with our uh, history, etc. We, frankly speaking, uh, uh, there was the, the, it's, it's not easy to find really a place or I don't know the building or or, or room or or event that is 
that makes connection between Lisbon and Belgrade or Serbia and Portugal. And uh, we, uh, at the end, we, we told that we, we may uh, design the, the building where uh, our mission uh, during Second World War, I mentioned Lucic, uh, who was there for a very short time, but he was there uh, as uh, him going to, to Portugal. And uh, at the same time, we, we know that uh, Sanyaski uh, uh, wrote during his uh, embajadas uh, uh, very short pages, but very interesting, very, very uh, uh, profound and funny pages about his uh, exile in Portugal during, uh, it was May uh, 41, May, June, three months. I think he spent uh, about three months in Portugal as uh, <coughs> Uh, together with other diplomats that been expelled from uh, from Italy, and then, then after he left uh, from Portugal to to England to London, and then he stayed for a long time. But uh, we had this idea uh, to connect uh, those two big great uh, writers uh, of Serbian origin who were diplomats with uh, with Lisbon. So we made a. Uh, 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 together uh, in cooperation with Lisbon uh, municipality, we, we, we made uh, uh, this board uh, that we put on, on this uh, building that uh, Yugoslav mission was was had place in a, say, during Second World War and during uh, one official visit of our head of state, it was uh, unveiled this this. Uh, uh, this world that is still exists so somehow uh, at least uh, uh, every Serbian tourist can can have kind of uh, connection you know the identity to identify itself in something that uh, that was connected with, with our, our own uh, uh, history uh, identity uh, we had also during this time it was uh, more uh, funny than the Important, but we had a uh, cooperation with the archives of the uh, municipality of Kashkaish, and they found in their archives, uh, it's funny how uh, this uh, country it was well organized. They found in an application, a hotel application of Milos Tanyansky in uh, 41, so with his <coughs> original signature. Uh, so they, they keep, uh, they, they have incredibly incredible archives that are uh, that are connecting the 12th century you know, even the local archives i went once to uh braga it's, uh, close to porto and uh, the archives started in the 12th century you know without interruption this is for from our point of view of a country that had the uh, during world history disruptions and the Second World War, uh, it is incredible. So uh, I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm concluding here more or less. I gave gave a general picture and some examples so far, my own uh, experience. But uh, uh, again, I would say that in the field of cultural diplomacy, uh, we need uh, maybe more uh, long-term strategic projects. Uh, uh, maybe now I'm not uh, sure how far it went. Uh, I know I know that we tried uh, some kind of this permanent exhibition, like the Tes Tesla exhibition, Tesla, uh, in different places. But uh, what I missed uh, when I was in this one is really some kind of this uh, support or some kind of uh, uh, institutional long-term promotion. For example, there was also very uh, in theory very easy uh, project to promote to promote uh, learning of Serbian language in uh, the university in Lisbon that needed a very you know money for sake like uh, 500 euros per month but we could not get this in order to to support somebody to enroll a person that would uh, uh, that we could uh, uh, organized permanent uh, uh, lecturing on Serbia, but uh, we, on the other side, uh, we we were able to uh, uh, to give uh, as a gift uh, few hundred uh, books uh, 
that we received uh, through the through our channels <coughs> to uh, part of the uh, letters of uh, Lisbon. Well, that, that's uh, uh, as I as I showed, uh, we have good and uh, less uh, positive examples of this uh, uh, activities of cultural diplomacy. But this is more or less what we are facing uh, uh, as a diplomat when uh, uh, we are sent abroad. We are facing with uh, rather uh, poor support, and uh, uh, we have uh, to manage if possible, some kind of more institutionalized type of connections. I tried also to, to uh, work uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, agreements, memoranda between museums, uh, but it did not work uh, for, for, for some reason. There are a lot of, uh, uh, on the other side, this is extremely large field of cooperation. Uh, there is, for example, Portugal, they are very much very ready to, to enter into cooperation to provide uh, their palaces. Uh, I don't know. You don't, I think it's different from Paris. They, you have to pay in Paris everything if you want to have a nice place. But in Portugal, is very often free of charge. And they are very, uh, they have also a kind of public that is interested, especially in visual arts and uh, painting, uh, things like this. <clears throat> so, and then they are also, they have uh, a lot of authorities that are extremely responsive to this. So I have uh, on one side, very positive uh, experience uh, and on the other side, as I say, we would, we may, as Serbia, we would, we, we could do much more with not, uh, not so much uh, uh, funds uh, and money, but we need kind of uh, continuity and a steady, uh, steady effort to this. Uh, well, this is more or less uh, what I have to say, uh, and I'm ready for your comments and discussion. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dear uh, ambassador, and thank you for sharing with us your uh, really valuable views on uh, cultural diplomacy uh, and especially relations between uh, Serbia and Portugal. Uh, it uh, was uh, really uh, important to see uh, how uh, it look on the other side when you are uh, also a PhD, where you are a scientist, and where you are a scholar, and you are also uh, the diplomat. And uh, you several mentioned that uh, you are um, you are on your own, <laughs> and that you have uh, uh, problems. But it is also very important that you stress the, uh, that uh, some sort of uh, public-private uh, initiatives. Uh, that is uh, sometimes uh, that we are not uh, uh, even um, uh, know when we are looking how it work uh, diplomacy. And also, uh, it was very important to stress uh, that the influence of popular culture and similarities and differences between yeah. two countries. And also, um, I have honor to work with uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, on uh, two history textbooks. Uh, and I know how it is important for you, your um, um, tradition and history and how, how it is uh, really important for your uh, work and you personally. And then um, it's very important to see uh, how it was used in the diplomatic mission and how it is important the uh, education of the head of the mission or ambassador and also the diplomatic staff and how it is uh, important in the case of small countries as Serbia and Portugal as well. And also, uh, thank you for your uh, theoretical uh, views uh, in the introduction, and also for an uh, empirically uh, very uh, fruitful uh, lecture. And uh, I believe that uh, we have a lot of issues now <laughs> to discuss. But uh, firstly, uh, now, dear Professor Milena, uh, please, the floor is yours. Uh, as you said, His Excellency Lopin, which was okay, you asked a lot of food for thought. Uh, I really appreciate it that they choose the uh, approach to us, your personal experience, your self-reflection. And that's also something that we have 
those two days uh, also on this conference, which is not necessarily the case with academic conferences where everyone wants to call other people and so on and to speak more about theories than about practice. But cultural diplomacy is really practice and it started as a practice and it's only late that uh, we started to theorize that or to, or to help exactly what you said that it's most needed to give certain long-term strategic approach so that the country define policies define in advance not to leave cultural diplomats uh, alone and uh, not really supported i'm not speaking only financially but supported with all other means and so on I like also very much that you make this dynamic in between spontaneous processes, what you call natural contacts that are happening in between the culture, but when culture really overpasses different barriers, but also this deliberate government-led processes, formal processes, these channels which even sometimes might frame spontaneous processes. Uh, unfortunately, in our case, our governments, I'm now speaking throughout the history, they're not that much uh, systemic, focused, and trying to frame processes that were, uh, sometimes it would be even bad to frame, but to support them, to make them more effective. And that's something that you also, I like that you point out that uh, although this bilateral communication, many times we think it's not that important because, okay, it's only one country and so on, but you gave us an example of Brussels, where our presence of Brussels in Brussels might be on, might have multiplying effects because the whole EU bureaucracy is there. And for a country like Serbia, especially in that, those times where we were actively in the process of European integration, one of the key questions was also how to change stereotypes and images and, uh, um, and yes, use of popular culture might be a very good, uh, very good tool in that. And you reflect it even on Eurovision, which definitely is showing not only how people feel about music. It shows geopolitical realities. It shows different sorts of interest, uh, but also strategies and uh, lobbying and advocating how it works in every possible possible field. Uh, in this moment, this university is part of one project of Creative Europe, which is called Stronger Territories. Southern coalition. So it starts with uh, Lisbon and Porto, and then throughout the south of Italy, and then uh, Balkans, Albania, Macedonia, Serbia, till Greece and Turkey. We wanted to, uh, in this, however, there is one uh, university that is, it's a three universities and 12 theater groups in this southern. Uh, stronger periphery southern coalition but there is one university that is really not i would say not really part it's barcelona barcelona is more part of the global north than of our peripheries in south but we have three universities lisbon is uh, barcelona and we and 12 theater troops and this is really important so for the first time that Usually, as they said, not only here from Serbia, everything is going France, London, Berlin, so from here, there. Now it's the first time that we are horizontally trying to strengthen each other. But that is, again, something of this multilateral collaboration that European Union is, um, is having. Uh, I also like very much uh, your historical strong common points that you underline because uh, not all of them are so widely known. In the, and sometimes it's uh, good to be 
to be systematized uh, on one place. Uh, but um, I will end up uh, in uh, having a few questions just so that we can have uh, uh, what question is for me very relevant? Is there any um, possibility to reflect or to use fear Portuguese experience of the processes of their defascization and European integration that happened after uh, 1774? We know a bit more about Spanish processes. In fact, somehow I see even today in Europe when I'm teaching that European students are not even aware of the differences uh, of why Spain, Portugal, and Greece have been so quickly engaged in the European Union and how it was important and so on. On the other side, because you, you said and you underlined, and even in your practical example, how it used to be difficult for negotiating such projects like Cultural Week or even films in Cinematech due to the problem of language, of translation. Uh, to what extent a diplomacy today? should use so-called policy of digitalization and dispose in each embassy with different sorts of digital products from e-books, survey e-books, till uh, titled digital films uh, of uh, Serbian producers, but also cultural heritage and everything that is, um, for me personally, I feel absolutely, uh, I think, that the uh, crucial strategic mistake of our governments uh, was the abandonment the, of the uh, statistic chairs throughout the world. And uh, in many countries, the places of lectures, lecturers for several Croat languages are now filled by lectors for Croatian language, which I mean, everything is okay, but we lost our place because we haven't been proactive in Skodras, in Skada, it's a lector for Migria language and so on. And still, in some, like in Warsaw University, they still have Serbistica as a very important and even more popular than that was a surprise for me, taking into account soft diplomacy of cultural tourism that most Polish uh, people are going to Croatia uh, for the holidays. It would be logical that they want to study Croatia, not Serbia, but somehow due to a literature, due to evil arms, due to big names of Serbian literature, those who are in philology faculty so uh, are um, uh, still tempted. But it seems to us <coughs> that besides those books distributed from National Library throughout Slavistic, we are not really, really doing much. And you made a point how. How Portugal is active to Fado, but Portugal is also very active to, uh, with their lectors yes. throughout the world, even here in Belgrade and, and so on. So, uh, and the third question somehow we have a lot of artists, you mentioned some of them, that they came usually during the 90s, intellectuals and so. People like Ben Tiago Sankovic, who is uh, alumni of this UNESCO chair, and he made an interesting thesis, by the way, about uh, the importance of translation programs and of program. And he was the one that his master thesis lobbied and helped Ministry of Culture. I'm not saying that that was the only reason, but it was uh, one of the reasons. Uh, that they developed a program of translation of Serbian literature to other to other languages. So, uh, how to, or for example, the artist Rafael Trusem, he is living usually half time in uh, Portugal to earn his money as a 
painter and then you know, lives here and so on. So we have some independent people, informal people, that probably not, I wouldn't even go to embassy to declare themselves that they are in Portugal and so on, because people are not used to it yes. to, to come and to, you know, some consensus of their services or help. They would think no one is there to accept them or who am I to, and so on. But this kind of, uh, I would say, to engagement of independent artists, curators, cultural personalities, and so on, might be very fruitful in establishing, and that's one point that I would like to underline with you, what you have said, to establish more institutional, that means durational uh, links, so that even the changes of ambassadors, politics, and so on, wouldn't affect some established, and I think it was a good idea of you to start through museum, although, and I would like to hear why it didn't work, because mu museums are, uh, and that also depends on leadership in the museums, but also in National Association of Museums, in ICOM of Serbia, and so on. But uh, it, it could be a very good, I would say, example or cinematic long term collaboration, all this, what we call heritage institutions. Uh, they are more yes, uh, here to help all cultures who know our national cultures better, but also world cultures better. So uh, I would like to hear your reflection on this few issue, defascization of society, um, how to use digital offer as a resource and how to achieve these systemic practices. I mean, your example also about archive uh, was excellent. And for me, always very meaningful to see how archives are vivid cultural institutions in, uh, especially in Latin countries like uh, France, uh, Spain, and Portugal. And the fact that they have really continuity of the memory, local memory, and of okay, Spain, Portugal, France, world memory also as colonial country, while our memory. At the best is in Dubrovnik archive, something that you can read, or in Istanbul archive, something that you definitely cannot read because it's even written in Arabic uh, script. Uh, so not only Turkish, but the Arabic script, so it's pretty complicated. So please, if you can just elaborate on two issues that I proposed. Yes, thank you. Thank you for this. Uh... Uh, excellent uh, analysis, and uh, I may uh, agree with uh, all you said, uh, but I uh, think passing uh, concerning these uh, issues. Uh, first, I would say that, that we are, we are, uh, or maybe, uh, as uh, uh, we all feel, uh, and we as diplomats, when we walk, we feel that we have potential, and we are <laughs> rather frustrated because. Uh, uh, because our, our country is much stronger in cultural side than in economy or um, I don't know what, what else, but we are very, we, we can provide, we have something to to give to provide on, on different, different field. And, uh, uh, and then we are frustrated because uh, of this concrete realization that, that that you, you try you know, it's bits and pieces that you can do because there is no continuity, there's no, no systematic uh, relations. So the best thing, and I agree with you, is uh, uh, if you if you if you end up you are for for you know uh, I would be the very banal, but then you will go to the mission first year you are you adapt and you are very ambitious. Second year, you, you work a lot and you, you do what you can. Third year, you think again uh, already what you will do next year. And you are most, uh, for most time, 
uh, I'm happy with the support with the frustration with the concrete dealing center drive. Obviously, if you end up with a few, uh, I would say, a network that you could, uh, could provide, it's not only culture, you know, for example. The, I spent, with, I think we spent more than 10 years to negotiate uh, a financial agreement with Portugal. It's sometimes difficult to get to, to explain why it takes so long time, but uh, or some some other type of, of uh, agreement. But once it is uh, it is done, then, then things can go by themselves. It's not important anymore who is ambassador who, and uh, uh, <coughs> <laughs> with this ad hoc <laughs> initiative, since it's always up, ups and downs. <laughs> I didn't mention by before uh, answering uh, by the way that uh, uh, during my time the, the, the presence of church was almost non-existent, but now they have some kind of uh, uh, represent diocese there, and obviously this is also part of uh, uh, culture. Uh, in a larger sense, activities uh, and uh, well, this is you know it uh, sometimes it doesn't match with the, with the composition of our our, our diaspora uh, because uh, those are uh, uh, guys who who there is a one painter uh, about Mihailovic also very well established in Lisbon, his son of our famous writer. Uh, a very, very good painter and very established. So he has exhibitions in Portugal. He lives from, from his painting, which is achievement already. already. <laughs> and uh, he sometimes makes exhibitions here, but it is total, always private. I don't know. He never had any kind of, uh, of support. But anyhow, uh, to uh, to comment a little bit about, uh, yes, I, I agree for concerning this uh, experience. What, what for us uh, it has been always interesting is the uh, Portuguese experience of reintegrating European or the time community and European Union. It is, uh, for example, interesting that uh, in Portugal there were never uh, 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 there are no at all uh, anti-EU, anti-European yes. uh, feelings or parties at all, even extreme right or extreme left. Maybe uh, sometimes in the past, communists or hardline communists, <coughs> and they uh, they were against membership. But today, uh, they are given support government, etc. They change a lot. Uh, why? Because Portugal had the. Uh, excellent experience of social transformation that they had in one generation it was amazing and also economic and, uh, and the infrastructure you can see today in every small city uh, the, 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 what they did uh, since the time they, they joined because they were uh, you know it's a uh, uh, it's like in a in a history always uh, in, in every nation past they were very uh, up and very down. So uh, in the 20th century, they became a poor, marginalized, very peripheral countries that, that did not have, that was isolated even institutionally because they were dictatorship. And when they opened in 74, uh, 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 I have uh, people I knew are the old diplomats that were first to come to Lisbon. Uh, Portuguese were seeking our help all the time. At the time, we were, you know, for them, superpower in international relations because we were non-aligned, we were involved in everything, we were uh, in kind of networks, they were out of everything. <coughs> so, and then in the uh, beginning of 2000, it was uh, the other way around, opposite. It's not, uh, I forgot to mention, I wrote it. Here, it's not by chance that they have a general secretary general of the United Nations that there is Portuguese. They have very, very uh, strong, this uh, very discreet, but uh, very successful soft power in international relations. They have excellent networks everywhere, and they are very skillful diplomats. Until this war, they were 
good buddies with everybody, even with Russians. Uh, when, when Russians wanted something, they did it through through Lisbon uh, with Americans. Uh, so uh, the, we 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 organize obviously try to organize different uh, seminars uh, concerning experience of Portugal, but this is very valuable uh, for today. <coughs> this their uh, uh, their fascism, their dictatorship was very uh, classical one. I I I would not. Uh, not what to say about this uh, comparison to today's system because we, we are more a kind of populist uh, regimes today that are that are hybrid mm -hmm. regimes that, that cannot be compared to really with with old old authoritarian yeah, because they had also you know this this uh, paramilitary units uh, young you know like. Uh, young people who were enrolled etc all the system was very traditional but uh, the, for us i think portugal more generally is interesting as a country that passed this uh, socio transformation very fast uh, they, they they they've been very traditionalist country for example very religious and in one generation uh, i maybe it's unfortunate but uh, churches are empty to the dead the cardinal complained to me that they cannot enroll anymore enough uh, new people. priests. New priests, yes. So it's uh, it was uh, it almost uh, shocking because you could see uh, I was uh, very short time for social progress. So for instance, nothing. But you could see by your own eyes how society is changing, and this is this may be very good example for studies for for for. Uh, sharing of experience, including of sharing the, the they have a very good score in this uh, use of funds uh, from you, etc. And also this uh, type of what what we need today, you know, to overcome this Euroscepticism that is uh, you know like a plate in in Serbia, and uh, that we can show one uh, very positive example that is Portugal even today from this point of view. Of a small country, poor country, uh, uh, that the marginalized country that could uh, kind of uh, of uh, integrate uh, these networks. About digital, I don't know. Yes, I agree. I don't know what if we did anything. What I know about our ministry, they, uh, but it changed with the big ministers. Uh, now they they stress a lot of this uh, this uh, Twitter diplomacy, so called on the internet every. Mission embassy has to tweet uh, all the time, <coughs> but uh, on a more a more uh, deeper uh, level of technology, we frankly speaking, we didn't do from from Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I can say that we didn't do it. Maybe Ministry of Culture. Or Ministry of Culture is doing, but yeah. I'm afraid that these realizations are sleeping currently in computers of yeah. those who produce it and in the computers of, or yes. in the shelves of the Ministry of Culture, that it, it's not in use in, throughout, yeah. not only in the world. I'm, I'm not the aware of any kind of use, maybe you, you saw somewhere or something. Uh, no, uh, but uh, I know that the uh, existing uh, uh, for example, the French ministry, when the uh, pandemic of COVID-19 uh, started, uh, they uh, made one platform, Culture uh, Chez Vous, Culture With You, and they actually produced a lot of things uh, for, uh, uh, from the museums, from the digital uh, exhibition, for example, and also for the kit uh, for some sort. Of our ministry did the same. Yeah. But the problem is without yeah. when French is in French, it's however. Yeah. That, that was, uh, so it was uh, uh, actually every embassy or uh, every French embassy put to that platform and they uh, changed uh, the um, uh, plan okay. of working of the, for example, uh, French Institute and other institutions, and they put it in the whole countries. And we didn't do that. Either. No, we did just our, which meant to be open for diaspora. Yes. Because diaspora like to watch uh, theater performances, 
So no translation, subtitling, and so on. So it was not possible to really be used in a diplomatic sense. But, and that's pity because it was also a big effort and many institutions did also each institution is not known and how to it's different for example the same project this museum challenge get the institute in la of course it's global it's local eventually our diaspora but the individuals from our diaspora. And I, yeah. no, uh, just to uh, one small thing that I know from our ministry, this is really can be even desired, but uh, uh, we, we, there is a, a small unit that, uh, that is now digitalizing uh, as a knowledge about uh, about paintings that exist uh, under, under a diplomatic uh, uh, system because every embassy has uh, has works of arts. Lot of, uh, works of arts, and we did uh, actually we have it so some papers somewhere in the archives, but nobody really uh, realized how good is for potential to to organize exhibition or something of it from these papers that are a number of you know, you know probably this is next. Yeah. Or the best factors of, of, of our, of our uh, origin about about, about like lectures and language. I I agree totally. I think uh, I mentioned that because it's for me it was always striking how Portuguese used language as a point of uh, contact and uh, uh, kind of uh, even uh, organizing the the they are very diversified and. Uh, Divided in, in politics from I don't know Angola or, or Cabo Verde or Brazil, but the language is something that they, they could manage to to gather everybody and to to uh, promote. Even they have this program of uh, uh, of uh, how say standardization of Portuguese because uh, in Brazil Portuguese is not the same as in Portugal, but they have commission for standardization for us. It's, uh, uh, it it would be dream, but even uh, maybe to to overturn this negative trend that we have for for decades now with, with, with this misuse of uh, languages would be good. And uh, my father was a lecturer. In seventies, in France, in Clermont-Ferrand. So I remember at that time that we had about fifteen uh, like yes. yes, in France only, uh, Yugoslavia, obviously, but mm -hmm. mostly were in at that time. I don't know. Do you know how many now we have in France? No, but it's very few. We don't have exactly. We don't have maybe we have in at most in Serbian lecture. Gordon, uh, Gordon uh, is probably Gordon out uh, because a lot of students uh, actually uh, start in France to learn some other faculty, uh, which are not faculties for this uh, uh, field of uh, and not politic. It is not even uh, humanities, it is not uh, yeah, it is no, uh, different because of uh, uh, social situation in France also. And that's why yes. we have that yeah. change and also one change plus. <laughs> then yes. definitely Amsterdam University, which is big state university, they close the whole yeah. solistic, yeah. not profitable. So and now with Russian and popular. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Because Russia was always number one and then that's all Polish and, uh, and below the four poles are, I think, a uh, good example of the, they have. They are super powerful. Their embassy is after Norway. They have the most of money as embassy to to catch a promotion. I don't, yeah. I don't. And they have other Mitskiewicz Institute, which is only for cultural diplomacy. Yes. Yeah, this they come with this uh, like Cervantes. So yeah, but it's strongly done from Warsaw. Yeah. Maybe Chile this is an idea that can uh, come out from this uh, conference yeah. to have. Like a Cervantes or Camões kind of like uh, for example, I uh, the film center 
from, from my point of view, was a positive experience despite all kind of uh, problems because there is a place you know where we go there and they are uh, they are paid, they are organized in order to promote works. That's the reason why we thought that besides National Film Center, yeah. we should have like the Greens National Book Center yes. and so on, so that those organizations can take yeah. this yes. role of uh, yeah. coordination. National Film Center really is excellent in doing yes. that. This yes. cultural diplomacy through here. I know well Tiago, I mean, he was not, he was uh, here, uh, but uh, he really did, uh, uh, as a person, he did uh, like an uh, institution because he was involved with translation. I have to say that I was surprised when he came to, and at least as a student, yeah. I just thought like, why do you need to have a master degree and so on? But he really insisted because he really had this idea that this country should have a, a policy in promoting translation and so on. And yes. that was, so he concentrated and made it. And uh, I think that that was a valuable contribution. And also with his writing, this kind of, because well, besides Zaraman, of course, uh, I, there are on a few other types of books that he either claims to or something the United yes. in once upon a time translated. But now he's one of the most active bridge in bridges in uh, between Serbia and Portuguese uh, Dutch. Yes. I would I would also have uh, for example we we are not to at all to uh as we are not at all I think behind behind the level of uh, of editors uh, uh, in comparison. I was at the book fair in Portugal. This is uh, uh, like a joke for our, for our book fair. It's, it's small. It's, uh, I also, uh, I had some friends who have been publishing things and they have all the similar problems. So that's not that we are the only one. But we are in, in general with the quantity uh, of of the literary production and translation. So also we are we are not the product of the Serbia, Serbian culture. Uh, we are now at the end of this uh, keynote. Um, uh, I really uh, think that it was uh, very fruitful for uh, all the participants. And uh, it was very important to mention uh, Portuguese expertise and also um, I think that uh, those days we are, we are uh, talking about uh, digital, uh, digital uh, diplomacy also and also, also our first uh, keynote speaker and I would like to mention um, uh, something that uh, he mentioned very important is that, it, is that uh, um, a, every country must have uh, something uh, very very specific to um, put on the light to put uh, in the diplomacy and um, uh, also uh, to prepare some common narrative. Uh, and uh, that is um, also, I think, very important in those times, uh, very uh, huge of uh, geopolitical changes. And maybe for the end of this discussion, you can, you can say something about that, uh, about uh, those. Uh, uh, about the future of uh, cultural diplomacy in the context of uh, this uh, uh, diplomacy who is not soft diplomacy, soft power, what is the other power? Yes, I, uh, we are in a, well, it's been a bad time, I would say, our times. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, just to, to uh, mention this, uh, this uh, European uh, networks, etc., I think. It is very important for us to, that we are in a creative Europe or this type of, of general of, uh, programs that, that uh, help uh, our institutions, cultural institutions to, to enter networks. Because the problem with Serbia basically is a bad image and, uh, and also lack of, uh, for, for years we were out of networks. So, so to reintegrate the networks is, uh, is uh, not e easy, yes. especially when you are not uh, automatically member of something as we are not. Uh, 
Well, I, I don't know the, 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 the Europe is, is, is aiming now. This is a, uh, this is a terrible, tragic uh, situation. This this war, uh, everything is ups, upside went upside down. Uh, it doesn't seem that the war will stop very soon. But so so fortunately, there is a big, it's a huge tragedy, and also. The problem is that it's a very dangerous for, for expansion of this world. Uh, so uh, uh, in this in this uh, uh, context, I don't know how much people can uh, think about uh, uh, a long term and about cultural aspects of diplomacy. But for Serbia, it is uh, I think vital vital. And uh, I, I, when I was ambassador in Brussels, I, I suggested not only to this this program for uh, Brussels, but I suggested the one general wrong cultural uh, strategic program for uh, that would uh, work uh, with France, with the uh, Scandinavian countries, with different countries in different levels, in order to promote a new European image of Serbia. But uh, it is not something that did not exist. It's just to co copy paste a little bit to the others that uh, entered European Union. Uh, uh, they also and uh, uh, continuously. I think even France has always need to promote its own culture, despite its uh, position as a cultural superpower somehow. But uh, it's uh, uh, with every new generation, you have to work again. And this is something that, that we should be we should do much more than we are we are now or we, we have been doing. That's my conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador uh, Lopendich, for your keynote lecture. Thank you, Professor Milena Rizvisheshi, for your your also uh, very interesting and fruitful uh, remarks uh, and comments. Um, thank you for being with us. Uh, stay with us uh, very soon in 15 minutes. We will, we will have our first panel for uh, today. Thank you. Okay, the next time I share the next panel.